Yeah. All good. Right. Thanks. Morning, everybody. I'm um, very pleased to be here this morning with Assistant Commissioner Ian Parrott at the Road Safety Centre to talk about a very important um, initiative that will be implemented from Monday. Uh, drug drivers have nowhere to hide when it comes to doing the wrong thing on our roads and as of Monday it will now be uh, far easier for police to immediately suspend the licence of a drug driver. And not just drug drivers but uh, drivers who are driving recklessly and dangerously on our roads. The truth is if you're taking drugs and driving, if you're driving recklessly or dangerous, dangerously, you're in it, it, you're selfish, um, it, it's a self-centred act, and it's utterly, utterly dangerous. Uh, police and our authorities um, do everything that they can on our roads to make sure that the net is wide and cast wide when it comes to uh, catching people doing the wrong thing on our roads. And as a government, we are committed to giving police um, all of the tools and all of the laws that they need to ensure that people doing the wrong thing in our roads are caught and penalised. Um, this is uh, one step that has uh, added to uh, a number of steps that have been taken in the last uh, number of months that are uh, further uh, enhancing our laws to protect people that are doing the right, the right thing on our roads. Uh, we already see that there is now jail time, jail time available for people who are driving with extreme speed. Uh, as Minister, uh, I don't want to see people who are caught drug driving uh, with the liberty or privilege of being able to drive on our roads either. And that is why this immediate loss of licence that is coming into effect on Monday is so important. Um, if you're doing this, you're selfish. If you're doing these things, you've got absolutely no sympathy from me or the government. My view is that the people that we want to support on our roads are those that are committed to doing the right thing. Those people that are committed to doing the simple things like putting a seatbelt on, putting their mobile phones down, driving to speed limits and of course not taking drugs and drinking whilst they're driving. This is an important step forward and one that I'm uh, very proud to be seeing coming into effect on Monday. I'll throw to Assistant Commissioner Parrott and then happy to take any questions. Uh, thanks Minister. Hey, look, South Australia Police are uh, really pleased that these new powers are going to be available to us uh, from Monday. Uh, if you are caught uh, drug driving, uh, police can take your licence away from you immediately, uh, which has not been the case in the past. We think this is a really important step in preventing those people who choose to use drugs and drive on our roads off of our roads straight away uh, as soon as they're detected. 20% um, of lives lost over the last five years have been as a result of people using drugs and driving. That's 20% of lives lost over the last five years. People have been using drugs, they causes for the reasons why people have lost their lives on our roads. Of course, we know what the situation is this year. It's an absolutely disastrous start to 2023, with 18 lives now lost on South Australian roads. That compares to four lives lost at the same time last year. And on average, over the last four years, nine lives lost. So we are well above, well tracking above, the number of people who are dying on South Australian roads this year. As we said last week, it's really important for people to listen to the message and behave appropriately on our roads. We are out there, we are tackling this, we are actually pulling people over and detecting people for doing the wrong thing. In fact, last year, over 5,500 people were caught drug driving in South Australia. I repeat that, 5,500 people were caught drug driving in South Australia last year. So if you think you're going to drug drive or drink drive, if you think you're going to speed or, dave or drive dangerously, if you're going to be distracted or not wear your seatbelt, you will get caught. Now, as I've said many times before, you're lucky if you get caught because we've hopefully prevented you from killing yourself or somebody else on South Australian roads. Another real disincentive for people to use drugs and drive is that the penalties for driving disqualified are also significantly enhanced with this legislation. So not only can you lose your licence immediately if you are drug driving, but the penalties associated with, it, with um, driving disqualified if you subsequently choose to drive whilst your licence is suspended, then you are facing much harsher penalties as well. And we certainly hope that this is a significant deterrent for people to also 
do the right things on our roads. Thank you. Can, um, in terms of actually um, handing out the instant loss of licence, is that going to be like a first resort or a last resort? Uh, so the availability of this new legislation hasn't been available before in terms of an instant loss of licence. So, as I said before, it's an option for uh, police officers roadside at the time of testing if someone's detected driving with, uh, with drugs in their system. And we're talking about ice, methamphetamine, ecstasy, cannabis. You know, those drugs that we know impair drivers' ability to drive on the roads. Uh, police officers can take your licence away immediately once you test positive. Is this a 12-month positive licence? Or is it, uh, how, how long is it for? Yeah, so the immediate loss of, of licence period uh, is generally a six month loss of licence uh, for uh, drug driving. Uh, for uh, drink driving, it varies depending on the amount of alcohol uh, that you are detected with. So if you're 0.08 or point up to 0.149, then it's a six month loss of licence. If you're over point, so if you're over 0.15, it's a 12 month loss of licence immediately. And those alcohol ones already in place? That's correct. Immediate loss of licence is not a new thing for uh, law enforcement or for our laws in South Australia. Uh, they have actually applied in a range of things. I've just mentioned uh, the drink driving. If you actually refuse a drink or drug driving test um, previously, you could get an immediate loss of licence. If you're driving at excessive speed, which is 45 kilometres an hour or over, or now extreme speed, you will also lose your licence uh, immediately. And there is also causing death by dangerous driving where you will lose your licence immediately as well. So these laws are focused uh, on giving police the powers to immediately remove people from the roads who have been detected doing the wrong thing and putting themselves and the rest of us at risk on our roads. Is there a scale like there is with drink driving for drug driving in terms of um, you go to a certain threshold at six months and then it's 12 months if you're higher above the limit? Uh, look, now, um, with drug driving it is different, if you, if, I have, if you have drugs detected in your system, there are drugs detected in your system, uh, there is no scale. Do you think this will save lives? Well, as I said, um, we're, we're hopeful that this measure will assist uh, us to save lives on South Australian roads. Uh, as I said before, 20% of lives lost uh, over the last five years have had a contributing factor where people have used drugs before driving. So surely um, people should heed the warning and as I said, that immediate impact of losing your license straight away when you detect it, as opposed to you know, potentially not losing it for a drug driving offence, it should be a significant deterrent. If you couple that with increased penalties, people should be aware that um, instead of six months in imprisonment term, it's now 12 months imprisonment term. You know, there are fines for up to now $5,000 for excessive speeding and another, and another range of offences. So there's, another, there's a whole suite of legislation that's going to assist us to enforce the law and keep people off our roads. But ultimately, it's up to everybody to do the right thing in our roads. Um, we don't want to see people making these um, deliberate, stupid decisions to put themselves at risk. And by the same token, there are lots of good people out there who um, do the wrong thing, they just, uh, for a split second, take their eyes off the road. For a split second they decide that you know, they need to speed because they're running late and they're getting frustrated. Now there are good people out there who are dying on our roads simply because they choose to take a risk. Now that is one of the features of the lives lost on South Australian roads so far, is that it's drivers who are killing themselves on our roads. Do you know how many um, drunk drivers have been caught on South Australian roads so far this year? Uh, I don't have the figures handy to me for this year, but as I said, over 5,500 people were caught drug driving on South Australian roads in 2022. But it, it, it just beggars belief that there's that many people out there taking those risks and putting you, me and everybody else at risk. Do you know if there's been, if, if, if you don't know, the figure hasn't been a particularly bad start to the year, do you know, in terms of drug driving or...? Um, oh, look, I don't have the, um, as I said, I don't have the figures for um, drug driving so far this year. Uh, but I think everyone would agree that 18 lives lost on South Australia this year is horrendous. It is now the worst start in 10 years to the number of lives lost on South Australian roads. So we are, again, imploring people to do the right thing, but um, we will be ramping up our education campaign very soon to target um, the at-risk groups and the at-risk behaviours that we're seeing on our roads. Uh, and we also will be increasing the number of dedicated enforcement operations that we are running uh, starting in the next week or so. What do you make of the drunk driver who crashed into the front of the house at Dublin Park last night? And he's a peep as well. Yeah, again, um, 
when you when you learn about the circumstances of the crash at Devon Park last night, uh, police uh, came across a vehicle in Devon Park uh, last night just after midnight. Um, they turned their emergency lights and sirens on. Uh, the vehicle drove off from them. The police lost sight of that vehicle. Uh, it subsequently um, uh, crashed into a couple of vehicles. Members of the public have pointed the police in the direction of where this car was, and we found a 21-year-old P-plate driver who blew 0.091, so been drinking, driving like an idiot, crashed into some cars. Uh, one of those cars he's crashed into has he's gone into a house as well, uh, and he's got a passenger in the car as well. So if I was that driver's mate sitting in the front of the car, I'd be tearing strips off him in terms of what the hell are you doing putting me at risk by the way you're driving and the fact that you're drinking and driving um, and allowing me in the car. In actual fact, you know, if you're a passenger and you've got a mate who's been an idiot driving like an idiot or drink or drug driving, tell him to stop the car and get out. Catch a, catch a ride share, catch a taxi, just get out of there. Um, there are some similar patterns of behaviour, which is what's really disappointing. Um, the Fatal Five continue to apply every single year. The major overriding factor, as it has been in recent years, is distraction. Um, regional roads are also uh, featuring prominently again, and in fact, I think the last five loss, uh, lives lost this year um, have all been on regional roads. They've all been single vehicle accidents with generally a, um, a, just a driver in the vehicle. So distractions are an issue, speeding is an issue. Um, we've also seen dangerous driving in a couple of instances and there are a couple of crashes that we're still investigating the circumstances. Of concern as well is that 35% um, of the people who've lost their lives so far have been between the age bracket of 16 to 29. You know, this is evident by the risk-taking behaviour of this 21-year-old uh, Devon Park last night. Equally, 35% of lives lost on South Australian roads have been people who are over 70 years of age as well. So you know, these are some of the factors we'll be focusing on in terms of both our education and enforcement campaigns uh, as we move forward in, in the next weeks and months. You mentioned that there are campaigns going forward. Um, the opposition is that really this week calling for a more targeted kind of social media campaign to younger drivers. Is SACO adequately equipped and funded uh, to deal with to see more campaigns rolling out? Um, particularly just over the TAC, things like the TAC Yeah. Uh, look, absolutely, we have we have got uh, the um, the funding to f enable us to ramp up our advertising campaigns. Uh, we have the funding that's available to us to actually develop um, new um, and, and impactful campaigns. Yeah, you know, we've spoken previously about recent campaigns around older drivers. We've spoken about um, recent campaigns around drink driving uh, and also drug driving as well. But you know, some of those campaigns uh, have a life have a lifetime in, in terms of their effectiveness and we certainly are looking at refreshing some of those key issues. Um, and we're conscious as well that you know, the younger people are not necessarily going to sit down and watch either the 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock news, sorry guys. Um, but, you know, so we are conscious that social media is a big, um, a big advantage and a big uh, source for us to actually reach out to younger people. So in addition to those longer term campaigns, we do look at um, short, sharp, you know, impactful campaigns, which is something we're exploring for that um, younger cohort. What's the message on that? I mean, look at um, the, the right hole this year, and there are you know, quite a, a number of people that have been involved in that. Is, it, is there something that's just not getting through for others? Is there, do you need to be a little bit more harsh in the advertising campaign? It's a really interesting uh, dilemma that we have in relation to, to younger people, you know, how do we actually reach out to them? So a lot of our market research actually um, gets young people in and, and asks them about what, um, you know, what message resonates with them, what they're thinking, what they're doing on the roads, what risks they're taking, so that we can actually tailor campaigns that are really going to reach out to you know, each of our target audiences. Um, I mentioned before as, um, with Selfish Prick, you know, 20 to 40 year old guys. Sorry, I'll just wait. Um, 
Yeah, so our market research and the way we go about developing campaigns is actually really quite sophisticated and it does get those target audiences in so we have the absolute best chance of breaching the target audience that we're looking at. Um, and so we do look for different opportunities, new opportunities to make sure we've reached that message. But clearly, um, there is still an element of people out there, an element of people in our community who either choose to completely ignore that or take a split second risk um, to make the wrong decision. There was also a fatality at Parola Uh, so, major crash investigators are obviously still investigating that. That is relatively raw in terms of uh, it's only just occurred uh, that crash down at Panola. Um, it was a truck that left the road uh, with a sole occupant uh, who sadly uh, died at the scene. Um, the cause of the crash, it's too early to determine uh, what happened. Uh, however, that will form part of the investigation, obviously. Well, uh, Someone's driving. Um, was reoffending an issue, and is that why? Uh, so what we do see is we do see a number of people who drive whilst their licence has been suspended or disqualified. Um, in terms of drug drivers, uh, there is an element of recidivism in terms of people re-offending uh, for drug driving. I don't actually have those figures with me today. But this is why the laws are not just about taking the licence away you know, at the time of being detected for drug driving. This is why the penalties have been increased as well, to act as an added deterrent uh, to ensure that people you know, really get hit hard and the message gets you know, really rammed home about you drug drive and get caught, then there's significant consequences for you. Um, so I don't have any information in relation to that. Um, that is also an operational matter, so unless the Minister had anything specific to comment on, uh, we can perhaps get some information for you later on. Um, and again, whether this is a question for yourself or the Minister, um, has there been any updates regarding the safety of the, the barracks and moving to a new site? Uh, look, I'm happy to pass yeah. over the Minister. Thank you all for coming. Thanks. Um, there are uh, planning and, and organisation regarding the relocation of, of safe hole operations from the barracks are, are well underway, they're well advanced. Um, there are 15 distinct operational units that are um, housed at Theberton Barracks. Um, they're diverse and they require a, a range of different locations, but uh, I can advise that we are well on track to see the uh, decanting and the relocation of units uh, starting this year. Oh, uh, there's multiple solutions being being considered. Um, multiple, uh, both temporary and, and more long-term um, locations. And as, and as I've said previously, and as the premier has said previously, um, this is a, a, a once-in-a-generation opportunity to future-proof uh, some of the operations that SAPOL currently are undertaking here at Thepin Barracks in um, largely um, old and, and dated um, accommodation, so it'll be a combination um, of, a, of a whole series of accommodation options. When will that likely be announced in terms of some of the locations? Uh, it'll be announced as soon as I can let you know some further details. Um, and just regarding general trainers, in terms of that, it obviously it's pretty significant is, um, in terms of the landfill sites that are being Look, oh, look, I can't give any operational um, update, but, but I do want to just but do, do, do two things and say two things. One is to give that comfort to the families um, of victims of crime, um, that, that police um, do an outstanding job. Um, they do an outstanding job um, well and truly long after um, often loved ones um, are victims of crime or, or may go missing. And the work that SAPOL do is both sustained, ongoing, um, but it also should bring comfort to families that, um, in the eyes of SAPOL, they're never forgotten. Um, on the flooding, yep. um, so Crooked Knob Road is reopening this morning, is that correct? 
Yes, the advisor that will open today. I'm not sure if it's this morning or, or sometime in the midday, but today. Uh, look, um, road the road um, disruption in the Riverland uh, and the ferry disruption has been one of the, the, the biggest impacts to the community. Um, the the sacrifices that the Riverland community, river communities have been making has just been profound. And they've been doing so in a, in a way which demonstrates the resilience of these communities. Uh, I've spoken to dozens and dozens of people in river communities whose commute has been hours, magnitudes of hours more a day because of closures. They've done so with resilience, they've done so with optimism. But the opening of Bookpanon Road today is a huge milestone and it's one that I know is not a day too soon for the Riverland community. Well, they will open progressively, um, determined by a number of factors. Of course, the, the, nat or the, the extent of damage that, that each road or each, each thoroughfare may have will determine how quickly a solution will, will be found. And, and also, those ferries that I refer to uh, largely are still closed, not because of the ferry being um, inundated, because the roads leading into the ferry being inundated, one in particular, um, Hunter Road, um, just outside of Manham, which feeds the Manham Ferry, does have significant damage. So, uh, as an example, the Manham Ferry will likely be one of the later to open because of the damage to Hunter Road. So, the Department for Infrastructure and Transport um, are managing this process. Uh, the government has announced $60 million of immediate support to repair and re remediate these roads, and I expect that, that as Book Penong has today, that roads will be coming online as soon as humanly possible. Just your reaction to uh, the obviously, and yeah. the system was continuous. Yeah, look, it's, it's shocking and it should shock people and, and everyone should be shocked into action. Um, I'm not shy to say that I support hard-hitting and at times controversial campaigns like Don't Be a Wanker, like Don't Be a Knob, like these campaigns which at times offend people but at other times also um, should should be a, a kick in the guts to encourage and persuade people to make better decisions on our roads. This is a shocking start to the year and, and as the Assistant Commissioner has already said there will be public education ramping up, there will be enforcement ramping up and this builds on the already extensive um, education advertising that's undertaken. It's too late to, to get to a young driver once they've already started driving on our roads and that's why the public education, the in-schools work that's being undertaken, whether it be by police, whether it be by our firefighters, whether it be by organisations, trusted organisations like the RAA is just so critically important and one and a very clear reason why the government directly financially supports the programs that these organisations run. Um, but the truth is, the truth is that there are really simple things that people can do to eliminate and mitigate against the risk of dying on our roads. The fact that one in five people who have died on our roads in the last number of years have had drugs in their system should be shocking. And that's why laws like the ones that we're seeing implemented on Monday around harsher penalties and more immediate penalties for drug drivers is important. But it's not enough by itself. And more Extra, more um, harsh penalties for extreme driving in itself is not enough. But every person, every person on our roads uh, can make really simple decisions that will make a massive difference in their chances of getting home safe. Yeah, look, I wouldn't want to comment on the likelihood of other elections being a matter for the um, Minister for Local Government, also the Electoral Commissioner himself, but I know that the um, Minister has made um, a public statement around this and the Electoral Commissioner has as well. Um, look, these, these laws are in place um, to, to bring um, transparency and to safeguard uh, the community's trust in, in, in local government. We've seen demonstrated, your, your question before about the floods, we've seen demonstrated the extraordinary work and the important work that local government, the councils do in supporting our community. 
Um, we need councils to be um, well governed and well supported and well resourced by their local communities and um, the mechanics around the likelihood of, of further elections will be one that I'd have to um, um, refer on to the Electoral Commissioner himself. Thanks guys. Thanks, thanks, thanks.